Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, February 20, 2020. Join us for the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and live via streaming worldwide through UNTV News and Rescue Facebook account and UNTVweb.com. I am William Theo. And here are the headlines. Whistleblower Alex Chong named several Bureau of Immigration personnel involved in facilitating the entry of Chinese nationals for a fee. President Rodrigo Duterte relieves officials and employees of the Bureau of Immigration allegedly involved in the scheme. Water service interruptions in Metro Manila's East Zone and some parts of Rizal to continue despite increase in Angat Dam's water level. About 500 Filipinos on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan are set to return to the country on Sunday. But a scientist decries completely chaotic conditions on the quarantine cruise ship. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa tags drug lords as being behind the killing of the top Bureau of Corrections lawyer, Frederick Anthony Santos. San Miguel Corporation to submit a revised design for the MRT-7 station at the Quezon Memorial Circle next week. And a woman in London incredibly plays violin while undergoing brain surgery. Reports on a bribery scheme that gives Chinese nationals VIP treatment and easy access to the Philippines for a fee have recently surfaced. President Rodrigo Duterte has taken a step in handling the situation in the Bureau of Immigration. Officials and personnel involved in the scheme will face charges, says a palace official. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Based on reports and proof, President Rodrigo Duterte relieves all personnel and officials of the Bureau of Immigration allegedly involved in the so-called Pastilla scheme. The bribery scheme allows a Chinese national to receive VIP treatment after paying 10,000 pesos to a Chinese travel agency. The money would then be distributed among immigration officials in a Manila airport to facilitate the Chinese citizen's entry to the Philippines. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte has relieved all officials and employees of the Bureau of Immigration who are allegedly involved in the latest bribery scheme where they purportedly facilitated the entry into or exit from Philippine territory of foreigners working for POGO, or Philippine Offshore Gaming Operators, for an unauthorized fee. Despite this development, Immigration Chief Jaime Morente still enjoys President Duterte's trust until such time the Chief Executive makes any announcement, according to Secretary Panelo. The present situation in the Bureau of Immigration, as well as how the present Immigration Commissioner run it, will be taken up in the next cabinet meeting. The palace official adds, immigration personnel said to have involvement in the illegal act are likely to face charges. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. Manila Water will continue to implement rotational water interruptions despite an increase in the water level of Angat Dam. The water concessionaire adds that customers will be affected only during peak hours. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. 
With just a 42 cubic meters per second allocation, Manila Water is obliged to manage their supply to their customers, especially with the forthcoming dry season when water shortage is anticipated. For several months now, the water concessionaire has been receiving less than the 46 cubic meters per second normal allocation from the National Water Resources Board. So, we expect that the level ng dam. So this early, kailangan paghandaan natin yon para uh, yung limitadong supply na nakukuha natin sa Angat Dam na siya nagsusupply ng 96-97% ng tubig para sa Metro Manila, mas mamanage natin ng, ng mabuti at nang tayo ay makatawid ngayong summer hanggang sa bago dumating uli yung tagulay. The water level of Angat Dam has been slightly increasing. In fact, from yesterday's 202.39 meters reservoir water level recorded at 6 a.m., it went up by 0.11 meters today. According to Pagasa, rains brought by the Northeast Monsoon contributed to this improvement. Despite this, Manila Water will further implement rotational water service interruptions. Manila Water adds that affected customers in the east zone of Metro Manila and some parts of Rizal Province will be affected by the water supply interruption only at off-peak hours. While yung interruption na binanggit natin is about 4 to 10 hours, in reality, mas maikli. Uh, dahil nga, madaling araw lang natin gagawin. So generally, mga 11 to about 3, 4 in the morning lang ito. Kung saan hindi nila mararamdaman. Customers may check Manila Water's website and social media accounts for the schedules in specific areas affected by the rotational water service interruption. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Japanese government has decided to close down the cruise liner docked off Yokohama. Hence, the Philippine government will have to bring out the Filipinos on the cruise liner soon. But the earlier schedule of the repatriates' arrival has changed. Aiko Miguel explains why. Around 500 Filipinos from the Diamond Princess cruise ship docked off Yokohama, Japan are expected to arrive in the Philippines on Sunday, February 23. The health department explains the date should have been on the 25th, but later changed after coordination with the Japanese authorities. I think the Japanese government has already decided that they'll close down the ship. So, uh, this is not... For sure, yeah, because you know we're getting this information from Musec uh, Dulari, but uh, we have to bring them out as soon as possible. So even those that had uh, earlier indicated that uh, they would want to stay behind, uh, there has been a change of heart. There is no specified time for their arrival yet, but according to the repatriation plan, the Filipino crew members and passengers will be received in Clark Air Base on board two planes. The exact time is being uh, determined by DFA as they are uh, coordinating the repatriation uh, of uh, not 400 but 500 uh, Filipinos with their uh, counterpart in uh, uh, Japan uh, and with the Ministry of uh, Health, Welfare and Labor. I was told that there will be two uh, planes that will uh, bring in our compatriots uh, but they're not arriving uh, at the same time. So I think there will be some th two, three hours difference between the two arrivals. The repatriates will undergo a 14-day quarantine period at the Athletes' Village in New Clark City, Tarlac. The IATF already unanimously decided that the uh, NCC will be the uh, accommodation of choice, which uh, will be temporarily uh, used as the quarantine facility for 14 days. Is the president himself during the meeting with the local chief executives uh, Monday last week uh, that uh, it will be the national government that in the end will make the decision with regard to uh, the repatriation of our uh, compatriots. The health chief also emphasizes that repatriates who manifest symptoms of the disease will be left in Japan for isolation and treatment. They cannot be sure until yung magbobort na 
Okay? Because, syempre, may mga nagdi-decide dyan. Yung iba, they might want to uh, stay behind. Oh, the others might have second thoughts or, you know, yung dating ayaw, gusto na ngayon. So, so let's just have an indicative number of 500. The process and quarantine protocol they will undergo is the same as what has been implemented on the 30 repeat rates from Wuhan City. Additional health personnel will be deployed to monitor and man the quarantine facility. 16 more hospitals from different regions will provide teams composed of 10 personnel that will be on duty around the clock. Secretary Duque adds that he spoke with and informed Interior Secretary Eduardo Año this afternoon that the letter signed by the Interagency Task Force had been sent yesterday to the CAPAS local government to inform the LGU that the repatriates from Japan will be accommodated in the NCC. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. As an extraordinary two-week cruise ship quarantine in Japan ended yesterday, with thousands of passengers and crews set to disembark, many scientists have said the ship seemed to serve more as an incubator for the new virus from China than an isolation facility that prevented the outbreak from worsening. Kath Dumaraos will tell us why. Two passengers from a cruise ship quarantined in Japan have died after contracting the COVID-19 virus. The two Japanese citizens were in their 80s and had underlying health conditions, local media said. At least 621 people on the Diamond Princess tested positive for the virus, the biggest cluster outside mainland China. Hundreds of passengers who tested negative for the coronavirus have begun leaving the ship amid heavy criticism over the country's handling of the outbreak. Kentaro Iwata, a Japanese infectious disease specialist at Kobe University Hospital, said the situation on board was completely chaotic. Kentaro took his criticism to YouTube after he spent a day as a volunteer doctor on the Diamond Princess. You might know that there is no CDC in Japan, but I thought there must be some specialist called on and uh, was in charge of infection control in the ship. I was not expecting nobody was professional infection control specialist and the uh, only the bureaucrats were doing the jobs uh, completely layman's work and the violating all the infection control principles and the uh, uh, risking people inside uh, further infections. So I'm not very surprised to see uh, many new positive PCRs to be broadcasted every day. Iwata said passengers and crew members are moving freely between the green zone, which is supposedly infection-free, and the virus hit red zone. Some crews had a fever. They went to the medical center while wearing an N95 mask, but he didn't have any protection between his room and the medical room and the medical officer was not protecting herself and she was very unhappy saying that uh, well she was already infected i'm sure about that so the uh, she was completely uh, giving up protecting herself the expert added he was more afraid of catching the virus on board than he had been working in the field in africa during the ebola epidemic and in china during the sars outbreak WHO officials have also said moves to contain the virus may not have been sufficient. And clearly there's been more transmission than expected on the ship. The government has repeatedly defended its measures as appropriate. We have specialists of infectious diseases and we get feedback from them about our operation every day, including dividing. It is true that the person is not a member of the team, but we let other infectious diseases specialists go inside to work. Iwata said that he could face professional repercussions for his public rebuke of the government. He said he posted the videos at the urging of his wife, who is also an infectious disease specialist, and said it was his professional duty to get the word out. Meanwhile, in China, authorities have reported a sharp drop in new coronavirus infections. There were 394 new confirmed cases and 114 deaths reported on Wednesday, down from 1,749 new cases on Tuesday, the National Health Commission said. Overall, there have now been 2,118 deaths and about 16,000 patients have recovered. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. 
The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention did not immediately provide details. The report came as South Korea is struggling to cope with the outbreak and its economic fallout. Earlier Thursday, South Korea said it has confirmed a total of 82 cases of the virus. The mayor of the South Korean city of Daegu urged its 2.5 million people to refrain from going outside as cases of a new virus linked to a church congregation spiked and he pleaded for help from the central government. Meanwhile, China has begun producing a certain drug it will use in treating patients infected with the coronavirus disease 2019. But the Philippines Health Department says they cannot simply allow the use of the said drug here in the country. Aiko Miguel clarifies why. The National Medical Products Administration of China approves the use of antiviral drug favilavir for the treatment of those infected with the coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19. The production of the antiviral drug began last Sunday in China. But the Philippine Health Department says they cannot simply approve the use of favilavir on symptomatic patients under investigation or PUI in the country. The DOH explains there is a process to be followed before a drug or medicine can be used in the Philippines. The World Health Organization should approve of it, and the Food and Drug Administration should issue clearances for its use, says Assistant Secretary Maria Rosario Verheri. Until we can have those regulatory clearances, ay hindi pa ho natin masasabi kung this drug can be used here in the Philippines or not. Meanwhile, based on the update issued by Foreign Affairs Department, the OFW in Hong Kong who had tested positive for COVID-19 is now asymptomatic or is no longer showing symptoms of the virus. She will be discharged if further tests come out negative. And here in the Philippines, based on the DOH report this afternoon, there are 17 additional PUIs. This brings the number of suspected coronavirus cases in the Philippines to 556. Of that number, 456 have tested negative for COVID-19. 35 samples await test results. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. An Atlanta couple aboard Japanese cruise ship remain optimistic after being hospitalized with coronavirus. Nina Armilio has the story. Two elderly American passengers, quarantined in Japan with the new coronavirus, learned on Wednesday that they were still carrying the virus, even after their expected quarantine period had ended. Their reaction? A shrug and a grin. Clyde and Renee Smith, both 80, were separated from their grandsons and taken off the Diamond Princess in the port of Yokohama and hospitalized after testing positive for the virus on February 3. Public health officials have said the incubation period for the virus was 14 days, but the Smiths were still positive in a test taken on Monday, two weeks after their initial test. The Smiths will be tested every 48 hours. We had the test on Monday, and that test came in today, and it is positive. And they told us that they would test us every 48 hours. And once we have received two consecutive negatives, then we can be released from the hospital. Renee said the news that they were still testing positive was a little bit unnerving. Well, it's a little bit unnerving because we have things going on at home we need to take care of, although our sons have really taken care of most of them for us. But we left for this trip on the 18th of January, and so we've been gone from home over a month. The Smith said their vital signs have been normal throughout, and they have shown no symptoms of the coronavirus disease. Japan's public health response to the biggest outbreak outside China has been heavily criticized, but the Smiths supported Japan's response and understood the need for them to remain in quarantine until they are free of the virus. You know, this is territory that people haven't been in before, and I, so I really do believe everyone's doing their best. Actually, I think that uh, as, as far as they could, they are staying on top of this, trying to prevent a real pandemic worldwide. I, I want us to contribute that 
uh, as best we're able as well. We can certainly understand the quarantine. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Welcome back. A lawmaker believes that drug lords detained inside the new Bilibid prison are behind the slaying of the Bureau of Corrections chief legal officer. The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, has been tasked to get to the bottom of the crime. Sherwin Kulubong will report why. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa suspects that drug lords inside the new Bilibid prison are behind the killing of suspended legal chief of the Bureau of Corrections, Attorney Frederick Anthony Santos, near the Bureau's headquarters in Muntinlupa City on Wednesday afternoon. Yung nagpapatay dyan sa mga tao natin sa Bucor, yan rin yung mga nakakulong na mga drug lords dyan na kumbaga hindi nasunod yung kailang kagustuhan. Maraming parang pera, maraming galamay yan sa labas na pwede kayo papatay. Tinatakot nga mga judge, tinatakot nga yung mga fiscal. The Muntinlupa City Police has created a special investigation task force to prove the slaying. Police say the CCTV was not able to capture the scene of the incident. Even the victim's car dash cam was not able to record the shooting. The police will have to scrutinize CCTV in the areas where the suspects could have gone through. I'm going on ngayon yun. The autopsy result shows that Santos sustained two gunshot wounds in the head, one in the neck and three in the left arm. The Department of Justice has tasked the National Bureau of Investigation to also get to the bottom of the crime. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara is not discounting the possibility that the killing has something to do with the Good Conduct Time Allowance or GCTA issue. The slain lawyer suspension was supposed to end in March. The office of the Ombudsman sanctioned Santos with a six-month suspension in September last year for alleged grave misconduct, gross neglect of duty, and conduct prejudicial to the best interest of the service in connection with the GCTA policy. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTV News and Rescue, Muntinlupa City. Police Lieutenant Colonel Jovi Espinido believes that he will be killed by someone in the government or the police. The controversial police officer also says he is not worried about getting dismissed from the service for speaking before the public. Lalaine Moreno explains why. Police Lieutenant Colonel Jovi Espinido still defends himself before the public in relation to his inclusion in the president's narco list. He admits he is aware of the gag order from PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa but says he just needs to defend his right and speak before the media. He explains that he did not defame the Philippine National Police but only cleared his name. That is my right. I have my personal right. Huwag niyo lang akong bawalan or else wala akong magawa din. Total, yun nga, demokrasya tayo. Kung kasuhan ako, so, ito na lang ang paraan na para ma-dismiss ako sa service team. So, wala akong problema. Espinido also encourages his comrades in the PNP to speak out the truth. The police official has refused to accept the optional retirement or resignation because he believes he did not do anything wrong. Espinido also says he expects he would be killed by someone from the government or the PNP and that this cannot be avoided. Hindi yun, impossible. May posibilidad yun na mangyari kay Espinido. That's why ngayon ako nagsalita. Maybe you can see now, anong February 20, next day, wala na si Espinido o patay na. Espinido reported to the Office of the Regional Personnel and Accounting Unit of Police Regional Office 6 this morning for the week-long investigation of the Adjudication Board. Malacanang has earlier stated that Espinido continues to enjoy the trust and confidence of the President and the Chief Executive believes that the reports of his alleged involvement in prohibited drugs are untrue. Lelaine Moreno, UNTV News and Rescue, Iloilo. Former Philippine National Police Chief and now Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa advises Police Lieutenant Colonel Jovi Espenido to stop talking about the President's narco list. The lawmaker also confirms his trust in Espenido remains. Leia Ilagan reports why. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa reminds that the adjudication process for the cops included on the President's so-called narco list is underway. 
So Police Lieutenant Colonel Jovi Espinido needs to stop talking about the matter. Please stop talking. Uh, you're still in the pain organization. You observe what is what uh, what should be observed, and uh, uh, talking indiscriminately is uh, not observing the proper uh, decorum. Otherwise, kung gusto niya magsalita na magsalita against the PNP, lumabas siya. The former PNP chief adds, it is impossible that a policeman might kill Espinido. If there is a group who would kill Espinido, it is the rogue cop who are affected by illegal drug operations, says the lawmaker. Hindi naman. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Hindi naman. Siguro kung may police na magkaka-interes sa kanya, yung... Uh, Mga ninja cops, ha? hindi yung polis na polis na matino. Senator Bato clarifies Espinido's name was not on the list on narco cops during his time as PNP chief. Hindi ko nakita sa panahon nung... Otherwise, hindi ko yan i-appoint as a... Pinadala ko yan doon sa Albuera. Hindi ko yan pinadala sa Albuera. Then later, pinadala ko sa Osamis kung may ganong klaseng report. Senator De La Rosa says... The PNP needs to investigate who among the policemen included Espinido on the drug watch list. Dapat ungkatin pa ng PNP kung sino ang gumawa ng report na yan, most likely sindikato yan. Sindikato na polis yung gumawa noon, ng report na yun. Dapat paluapin ng uh, PNP yan, hindi pabayaan. Dahil kung nandiyan pa yung mga polis yan, most likely mayroon na naman yung gagawing uh, kalukuhan sa ibang kasamaan nila na makakalaban nila. Senator confirms his trust in Espinido remains. He's my man, and uh, as I've said, I, I am vouching for his uh, integrity. Kilala ko siya, namatino siya. Just like President Rodrigo Duterte, Senator De La Rosa does not believe that the controversial cop is involved in illegal drugs. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, come Krami. After recovering from his injury, the noodle vendor shot near his home after a day of earning a living may expect to receive aid from the Manila city government. But the suspect in the crime will face charges according to the police. Bernard Dadis details why. Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso brought good news to the noodle vendor who was shot in the neck upon his visit in Gat Andres Bonifacio Hospital. The Manila City Chief Executive tried to pacify and calm the patient who remained in a hospital bed, assuring that the city will provide him a place where he could continue his livelihood legally after recuperating from his injury. Forty-one-year-old Samson Bautista was on his way home in Batang Bayani Street, Baseco Compound, from a day's work at past 1 a.m. on Tuesday, when Alexander Ogdamina pulled the trigger after the noodle vendor refused to give his hard-earned money to the criminal. Ogdamina, jobless and a resident of Gasangan Baseco Compound, Port Area, Manila, admitted to authorities that he uses illegal drugs. The suspect was apprehended through a follow-up operation conducted by the Manila Police District, Ermita Police Station at past 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Police recovered a revolver and five pieces of ammunition from the suspect. Manila Mayor Scott Moreno rushed to the police department upon knowing that the suspect had been captured. Yormi Evans called it Ogdamina. <laughs> According to the local chief executive, it is obvious that Ogdamina is not novice in killing people. The suspect will be charged for crime of robbery with prostrated murder and RA 10591 or Comprehensive Law of Firearms and Ammunition, according to the Manila Police District. Mayor Isko congratulated and thanked the barangay officials and the police department for the quick response and capturing the suspect. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila.
The Quezon City Department not only halts the construction of the MRT 7 station at the Quezon Memorial Circle, but also orders to redesign it. However, the Transportation Department is positive the redesign is possible. All it is is after all it is after is a win-win solution. Joan Nano tells us why. The Department of Transportation and San Miguel Corporation have talked with the Quezon City government over the issue of the MRT7 station construction at the Quezon Memorial Circle. According to the DOTR and the SMC, they recognize the integrity of the historical structure. They also understand the predicaments of Mayor Joy Belmonte. Because of this, the contractor will redesign the MRT7 station to be submitted on February 28. Prior to the construction of the new design, the Quezon City government has to approve it first. The DOTR, however, explains there is a need to expand the measurement of the station. This is because of the increasing demand of passengers, noting that the original design was approved in 2008 or about 12 years ago. Makikita nyo yung ridership na yun, malagong malago na yan, kumpira sa 2008 at 2020. Ganun pa man, lahat yun titignan at bibigyan kalunasan upang sa ganun matuloy yung ating MRT7 in the deadlines we hope it to be, to be partially operable by 2021. Mayor Belmonte, after issuing a cease and desist order on the project construction on Monday, emphasizes that she is not against the government's Build, Build, Build program. She reiterates that her government is after the integrity of the popular leisure park that sits in the country's most populous city. It can be a redesign, it could be an improvement. But more importantly, it is addressing a problem to achieve a win-win solution, which the three parties in their meeting yesterday have agreed to work in accordance with. Joan Naro, UNTV News and Rescue. Malacanang denies an order for the Department of Budget and Management to withhold the 80 billion pesos in congressional realignments. It was Senator Panfilo Lacson who revealed that his office received information that the Department of Budget and Management and the Palace had withheld the release after learning the realignments were taken from some of the flagship projects of the Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. Senator Lacson described the practice of the lawmakers who allegedly tried to realign at least 80 billion pesos from the 4.1 trillion peso 2020 national budget for their district's pet projects as an unmitigated call. Secretary Salvador Panelo, presidential spokesperson and chief presidential legal counsel, said the 34 billion peso budget will not be released immediately but depending on the need, for the release thereof, in other words, there will be a process. Were there no instructions from Malacanang to do this? No. The Philippine National Railways expects an increased ridership after deployment, the deployment of two new train sets today. But good news, there will be no fare increase, says the PNR. Joanano tells us why. Two new trains are readily available to serve thousands more commuters. This as the Philippine National Railways deploys the new train sets from Indonesia beginning today. Each train set is composed of four coaches that can accommodate around 1,000 passengers on every trip. The new train set's routes are to Tuban to Albang stations and vice versa. Fully air-conditioned, well-lit, lots of handrails and CCTV system. The door glasses and windows are made of polycarbonate which cannot be easily destroyed in case of stoning incidents. The doors also have a special feature. When a passenger gets stuck between the doors, they automatically open. PNR General Manager Jun Magnus says the Philippines has purchased a total of 37 coaches from Indonesia. The remaining 23 units will be delivered in the coming months. Habulin po natin na by the end of 2020, we should have enough capacity to serve the southern and part of the northern corridor. Iyunit uh, po ang natin na bubuksan na po natin yung Valenzuela line para ma-offload din po natin ang EDSA. There will be no increase in PNR fares despite these developments. All that Transportation Secretary Arthur Dugade asked from the public is cooperation in maintaining the new trains, which will be for their own benefit, he adds. Gusto natin manatiling matagal ang paggamit ng ating mga tren. Kailangan ho, yung kooperasyon ng lahat. Gamitin ng tama. 
Huwag gumawa ng perwisyo, huwag maging pasaway. Earlier this year, two new train sets began running from Tutuban to FTI stations and vice versa. The PNR says that once all of the new trains become operational, ridership is expected to increase by 92,000 from the current 20,000 daily passengers. Joan Aro, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Y News continues. A magnitude 5.4 earthquake struck Davao Occidental Thursday afternoon, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology said. The epicenter of the quake that hit at 5.45 p.m. was 28 kilometers southeast of Jose Abad Santos municipality in Davao Occidental. It had a depth of 190 kilometers. The earthquake was felt at intensity 4 in General Santos City and Intensity 3 in Sarangani's Kiamba, Alabel, and Malungon municipalities, as well as Tupi in South Cotabato. Intensity 1 was recorded in Kidapawan City and Coronadal City. The informant of Santo Risa Ontiveros on the alleged bribery or the so-called Pastilla scheme surfaced and testified in today's Senate hearing. The witness is Alison Alex Cheong, a frontline immigration officer in Ninoy Aquino International Airport since 2012. Harleen Delgado tells us why. Alison or Alex Cheong is the person behind the surveillance video presented by Senator Risa Hontiveros during Monday's Senate hearing. Said video shows the supposed special treatment for Chinese nationals at Naia Terminal 3. Chong confirmed that immigration officers received bribes from Chinese citizens to ensure a smooth entry to the Philippines. The Greece money is referred to as pastillas, just like the milk candy rolled in a piece of paper before getting upgraded to envelopes. Pastillas is uh, no, uh, Chinese money that is used to bribe immigration officers so they can freely enter our country. The witness claims immigration officers use Viber groups where the list of names of Chinese nationals who avail the VIP treatment are being sent by travel agencies in China. Chong says that once the name of a Chinese citizen appears on the list, he will no longer have to undergo the screening process of immigration officers. He further claims that every immigration officer at Naia Terminal 1 involved in the scheme receives around 20,000 pesos weekly, while immigration officers at Terminal 3 receive 8,000 pesos. Chinese fugitives, according to Chong, can also enter the country by paying larger amounts ranging from 50,000 pesos to 200,000 pesos and even up to millions of pesos for high-profile fugitives. Chong also tagged those who are behind the syndicate operating the scheme, including BI Deputy Commissioner and former Ports Operations Division Chief Mark Redfarinas and Travel Control Enforcement Unit Chiefs in Naia Terminals. Your Honor, after po nung first hearing nyo, nung in-expose po nyo to, nag-dissolve ka agad sila. Siyempre po, mag magtatago yan, mag-burrow yan sila underground. And then, uh, ang feeling ko po ngayon is, wala, nag-sacrifice na ako. I don't think I can go back to my work as an immigration officer kasi, siyempre, galit na sa akin yung bureau. Chong says he decided to come out after receiving threats to his life and family. He adds he surfaced to end the suffering of other immigration officers who have been enslaved by the corrupt system. So, bulan na po eh. Gusto ko po i-expose talaga itong nangyayari sa immigration. Senator Hontivero says she will subpoena the immigration officers and officials involved in the scheme in the next Senate hearing. Meron pa ring mabigat na latak sa kalooban ko na hindi ka panipaniwala na totally hindi nila alam. Pero uh, napansin ko rin yung sinabi ni Alex Chong na wala kanina sa session hall yung mga opisyal na alam niyang kasangkot particular ng Pastillas operation. Chong has been placed under the Witness Protection Program of the Department of Justice according to the lady senator. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. And for the news abroad, here's Stephanie C. live from Hong Kong. Stephanie, good evening. Good evening, Diego. Australia is mourning the death of a mother and her three children who were all allegedly murdered in a car fire. 
Police are yet to confirm reports that the father, a former rugby player, set the car alight in Brisbane before stabbing himself to death. Nina Bascon details this report. Hannah Baxter, 31, and her children Aaliyah, 6, Lena, 4, and Trey, 3, died after the family car was set alight on a street in the Brisbane suburb of Camp Hill on Wednesday morning. Miss Baxter's estranged husband and the children's father, Rowan Baxter, allegedly doused his family with patrol. The 42-year-old former Warriors NRL player was found dead on a footpath with self-inflicted wounds. Neighbors at the scene attempted to help the mother and children, including a man who tried his best to get to the car and received burns to his face. All I saw was some flames and then the vehicle rolled across the road and came to a stop over there. The vehicle was engulfed in flames and the lady was screaming. I've seen some horrific scenes. This this is up there with, with some of the best of them. It's, uh, it's a terrible scene. On Wednesday, members of Hannah Baxter's family set up a fundraising page for funeral costs and to support her parents, who they said had exhausted themselves to try and help Hannah escape this monster. The estranged couple had owned a fitness business called Integrate and are believed to have separated before Christmas last year. The family was not involved in any family court or federal court proceedings. Queensland police have yet to confirm whether they believe the attack was a murder-suicide. Prime Minister Scott Morrison described the incident as devastating and encouraged victims of domestic violence to seek support. Nina Bascon, Yan TV News and Rescue, Australia. A rising New York rapper was fatally shot in a rented multi-million dollar home in Los Angeles Hollywood Hills after an apparent armed robbery. Meanwhile, police special units are chasing an unknown number of perpetrators after at least eight people were killed in two shooting incidents in the German city of Hanau. Beverly Saison details this report. In Germany, Eight people were killed on Wednesday night in two shooting incidents in German city near Frankfurt and special forces were chasing the gunman who fled in a car. Heavily armed police sealed off two streets in the city of Hanau where ambulances had rushed. A police helicopter hovered over the city east of financial hub Frankfurt. The motive for the shootings is still unclear. Local media said gunmen had opened fire at two shisha bars in Hanau and that two people had been shot in a car parked in front of one of the cafes. The gunmen fled the scene of the first incident in a dark-colored car. Police have set up a hotline for members of the public with information that could lead to the perpetrators. In the USA, rapper Pop Smoke has been killed after an apparent armed robbery. Los Angeles police said a man was shot at his home and later pronounced dead, although didn't confirm his identity. But his label Republic Records says it's devastated by the unexpected and tragic loss of Pop Smoke. Police responded to reports of a robbery. A man was then taken to hospital and later pronounced dead. Officers confirmed that an unknown number of suspects entered a property in West Hollywood. Police say no suspects have been identified and no arrests have been made. In Syria, for the first time in eight years, Aleppo civilian airport opened to receive its first passenger plane on Wednesday, a flight coming in from Damascus. The reopening of the airport comes days after the Russian-backed Syrian army said it has seized rural areas northwest of Aleppo, a major strategic gain in weeks of bombing of the last rebel bastion in northwest Syria. Transport Minister Ali Hamoud said authorities were waiting for approvals to resume international flights with plans to reopen the route to Cairo next month. Government officials hope the resumption of commercial flights will help revive economic activity in the city. Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex will formally step down as senior royals from 31st March. A spokesperson for the couple has said they will no longer carry out duties on behalf of the Queen, but arrangements will be reviewed after 12 months. Earlier this year, Harry and Meghan announced they would be stepping down from their royal duties and working to become financially independent. They will return to the UK for engagement at the end of this month. 
The couple intend to split their time between the UK and North America, and the spokesperson said they would be in the UK regularly. Larry Tesler, an icon of early computing, has died at the age of 74. Tesler started working in Silicon Valley at the early 1960s at a time when computers were inaccessible to the vast majority of people. It was thanks to his innovations, which included the cut, copy, and paste commands, that the personal computer became simple to learn and use. Xerox, where Tesler spent part of his career, paid tribute to him. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Stephanie Z, reporting live from Hong Kong. An incredible moment, an orchestra violinist played her instrument while surgeons operated on her brain, was captured on video and has gone quickly gone viral. The patient underwent surgery to remove an aggressive tumor on her brain. Nina Armilio details why. The sound of a violin filled this operating room at the King's College Hospital in London last January 31. Dagmar Turner, 53, a former management consultant from the Isle of Wight, played her violin during an operation to remove a tumor from the right frontal lobe of her brain close to the area that controls the fine movement of her left hand. To prevent any damage to her violin skills, neurosurgeons came up with a plan. They would map her brain, open the skull, and then get her to play as they removed the tumor. While surgeons cut away part of her brain, Turner played music by Gustav Muller. George Gershwin's jazz classic Summertime and pieces by Spanish songwriter and singer Julio Iglesias. I was thinking about what to play. That's really difficult because it will just something would jump out of your head and your fingers. And, and then I remember that my bow um, kept hitting something or someone and I always just thought get out of my way I need to play louder and I don't know if it was you Professor Ashkan if I was poking you with my bow. Ashkan said it was the first time a patient had played an instrument while he performed surgery. He said the procedure was a success removing over 90 percent of Turner's tumor including the more aggressive areas while retaining full function in her left hand. Turner thanked the surgeons, saying that the violin was her passion, having started playing at the age of 10. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And for two nights in a row, the winterly sky in northern Finland was lit up with spectacular displays of northern lights. On Tuesday night, dancing lights could be seen over the skies of an Arctic town in Finland's Lapland region, close to the border with Norway and Sweden. The show colored the sky with green, pink and white lights, forming quickly changing patterns. Spring is one of the best times to see the northern lights, also known as the aurora borealis, because of augmented solar wind activity taking place in the Arctic Circle that time of the year. And those are the reasons behind the news. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. I am William Theo. And I am Angelo Castro III, because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening. After po nung first hearing nyo, nung in-expose po nyo to, nag-dissolve ka agad sila. Siyempre po, mag magtatago yan, magbuburrow yan sila underground. And then, uh, ang feeling ko po ngayon is, wala, nag-sacrifice na ako. I don't think I can go back to my work as an immigration officer kasi, syempre, 
galit na sa akin yung bureau. I think the Japanese government has already decided that they'll close down the ship. So, this is not for sure yet, but uh, we have to bring them out as soon as possible. Some clues had a fever, they went to the medical center while wearing an N95 mask, but he didn't have any protection between his room and the medical room, and the medical officer was not protecting herself. Yung nagpapatay dyan sa mga tao natin sa Biocor, yan rin yung mga nakakulong na mga drug lord dyan na kumbaga, hindi nasunod yung kailang kagustuhan. Marami pa rin pera, maraming galama yan sa labas na pwede kayong papatay. Tinatakot nga ang mga judge, tinatakot nga yung mga fiscal. Please stop talking. Uh, you're still in the pain organization. You observe what is, what, uh, what should be observed. And the uh, uh, talking indiscriminately is uh, not observing the proper uh, decorum. Otherwise, kung gusto niya magsalita na magsalita against the PNP, lumabas siya. Pinatapos lang para sa mga vendor. 